I welcome you to the first of deliberative session of your 2012 school meeting. The second session will be held in conjunction with town elections at this location on Tuesday, March 13th. At that time, we will vote upon the warrant articles that we are today discussing. Our job today is to prepare these warrant articles into their final form for the ballot. Please rise and join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag of our great nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. I now declare the deliberative session of our 2012 annual meeting officially open. Now let's meet our head table. On my left and your right are the following school district officials who will be introduced by... Krista. 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 Okay. My, my name is Krista Argeropoulos. I'm vice chair of the Alton School Board. Uh, to my left... Or to my right today, I have Terry Noyes, Chair of Belton School Board, and Linda Roy, um, School District Clerk. Thank you. Um, to my left, I have Jeffrey St. Cyr, Linda Goosens, Sandy Wyatt, and our attorney, Barbara Lohman. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, behind me, I have uh, Principal Sidney Leggett, um, our business manager, Kathy Oblinas. Uh, for Alton and Prospect uh, Business Manager Chuck Stewart, and at the end of the table, Paul Bartolomucci, Superintendent for Prospect. Thank you, Krista. On my right and your left are the following Budget Committee members who will be introduced by Mark DeCoff, Chairman. Thanks for everybody for coming tonight, or this afternoon. To my right, we have the uh, Vice Chair, Steve Miller, Barbara Howard, Lauren Carr, the Selectman Rep, and uh, Dave, or Lawrence Tilly. Uh, who filled in for uh, Doug Kirkpatrick, who had to uh, step down this year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I believe we have a presentation. Terry, you're going to do it, or Krista, you're going to do it. Krista, Krista Adjurakos. And I remind you, I'm the only one in this place who can pronounce that name. Ask Steve Miller to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the Alden School Board, we would like to welcome you to the 2012 School District Meeting. The Alden School Board, along with administration, met last summer to set a vision and update our school board goals. Our goals are a tool that we use to foster, foster our school mission, small enough to create a safe environment that inspires each child to excel. The following five goals, along with the action steps, were updated. The first one is to establish and maintain a good relationship with the entire community, including teachers, parents, and the community. To ensure the district facilities meet present and future needs of the students. Ensure that the school board maintains its responsibilities. Ensures that the fiscal needs of the district are met. Ensure that the educational programming meets local, state, and national guidelines. And to raise the bar regarding expectations for academic success for all students. It is our goal and mission statement that guide us in preparation for the budget and the warrant articles presented to you today. Over the summer and fall, the school-wide job descriptions were reviewed and updated. We also reviewed all ACS policy handbooks. The school parent handbook is now available on the school website. We have been able to accommodate requests by many parents to use less paper and provide appropriate school documents online. The NECAP test score results were received last week, and I'm excited to report that the Alton Central School showed significant growth in reading, math, and writing. We will not know until later spring if we'll be awarded AYP status or not. Thank you to all the administration, the teachers, the staff, and most of the students, for, and most of all the students for their hard work. This year, the board was faced with the job of finding an, another leader for our school. Over the last two months, we were fortunate to have 10 school and community members step forward to serve on a principal search committee. We had 26 applicants, and the committee narrowed the field down to five very competitive candidates. All five candidates were interviewed by the search committee, and three candidates were chosen to be interviewed by the school board. From those three finalists, Sydney Leggett was chosen as our new principal. I'd like to, for now, to introduce Sydney Leggett. Thanks. 
I'm proud to report that some of the Alton Central School employees have received state recognitions. Special Education Director Catherine Dix Herndon received the Special Ed Education Director of the Year Award. Marley Kwan and Pam Forbes were Teacher of the Year nominees. We had six employees earn degrees, one additional endorsement, one track movement, two certifications, and three highly qualified teacher recognitions. Thank you to all of these employees for continuing their higher education. <laughs> Sincere thanks goes to Chairman Marilyn Dane and the Alton Central School Buildings and Grounds Committee for their continued dedication and commitment to the Alton Central School community. Without their hard work and diligence, we'd not be where we are today with this renovation project. The board looks forward to another year working with the community to provide our, ch our children with quality education and the school facility that they all deserve. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. The moderator's rules for this meeting are, and I'll read them. The moderator will not follow Robert's rules. The moderator will use the following general rules of procedure whose main purpose is to keep the meeting moving and not get bogged down in procedural quagmires. Two, by majority vote, the voters can overrule any decision that the moderator makes and any rule that the moderator establishes. A voter can raise such a request as a point of order. Three, the moderator will take the articles in the order they appear on the warrant unless he announces the intent to take articles out of order. Four, after an article is read, a motion must be made and seconded prior to any discussion of the article. The names of those making and seconding the motion will be required. The moderator will then ask for someone to speak in favor of the article and then open discussion for both pro and con. Five, the moderator will allow only one motion on the floor at a time with the exception of points of order, a motion to amend the pending article by a person who has the floor, or a motion to move the question by a person who has the floor. Six, no one may speak unless they are recognized by the moderator and have the floor, with the exception of points of order. Seven, everyone who speaks must use the microphone. Please start by stating your name. Be aware that the meeting is being videotaped for future re uh, replay on public access television. Eight, all amendments to a motion must be in writing. Nine, Motions to move the question limit debate and require a two-thirds vote. Ten, non-voters of the town of Alton may not speak at the meeting without the permission of the voters, except the moderator will allow non-resident town and school officials and consultants or experts who are here to provide information about an article to speak. Eleven, all speakers must be courteous. The moderator will not allow personal attacks or inappropriate language. If you are out of order, you'll be warned once. If you persist, you will be assisted from the building by the police officer in attendance. Twelve, all questions and comments should be addressed to the moderator. The moderator will choose who responds to the questions. Thirteen, with the exception of initial presentation on articles, which the moderator requests are limited to ten minutes, all speakers in debate will be limited to three minutes. Fourteen, each speaker may only speak once until everyone has spoken. Fifteen, voting will be done by a show of cards. If in the opinion of the moderator, the result is inconclusive, a standing vote will be taken. Sixteen, a secret ballot will be used when required by statute or when requested by five voters present at the meeting during or at the end of debate on the article. 17, a motion to reconsider may be made after a vote has been taken and must be made by someone who voted with the prevailing side. 18, a motion to restrict reconsideration on any article may be, may be made after the vote has been taken. 19, the moderator may vote on all articles, however this moderator will only vote to break a tie. To the inhabitants of the school district of the town of Alton, qualified to vote in district affairs. You are hereby notified to meet at Prospect Mountain High School 
on 242 Suncoast Valley Road in said district on Saturday, February 4th, 2012 at 1 p.m. This session shall consist of explanation, discussion, and debate of warrant articles numbered 1 through 22. Warrant articles may be amended subject to the following limitations. A, warrant articles whose wording is prescribed by law shall not be amended, and B, warrant articles that are amended shall be placed on the official ballot for a final vote on the main motion as amended. This session shall also be to hear state of the school reports of agents, auditors, committees, or officers, and pass any vote relating thereto. Now let's get to the work of the day. At this point, I will accept a motion to amend the order that we will address uh, the warrant articles uh, coming before you. Mark Dekoff, I have a motion to amend the order. Uh, would you read it? Uh, I move that articles 3, 4, and 5 be moved to the end of the warrant after article 21, and that articles 3, 4, and 5 be placed after article 21 on the official ballot to be voted on at the March election. Do I have a second on that amendment? I'll second. We have a second over here, Terry Noyes. Uh, Who would care to speak, speak in favor of that? Kathy Holt. Good afternoon. Please bear with me for a few minutes while I lay the groundwork for what has happened before explaining what has to happen and why. On Thursday afternoon, our attorney notified me that we had not sent her the district's warrant. It was immediately sent to her. Upon her review, she called back to let me know that because the budget committee's vote was not in favor of supporting the renovation, rebuild, and addition, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for articles three through five, I mean three and five, the district could possibly exceed the 10% cap on allowable spending. I tried to argue that bond articles are not part of the 10% limitations on funds. That was what I always knew about bonds, notes, mandatory assessments, and master agreements, and that these are excluded from this cap. Our attorney, in some exasperation, finally got through to me. The bonds referred to me, referred to in RSA 3218, referencing limitations on appropriations for bonds, is for prior bonds, such as the district has already sold, the Prospect Mountain High School bond. I have made a mistake of enormous proportions by my misunderstanding over many years of how to apply one section of an RSA. In so doing, you, as voters, will be asked to take action here today that may defeat what many of you have been working on for a very long time. You have been asked to move Articles 3, 4, and 5, the bond, the geothermal, and the gym, to the end of this ballot so that, in essence, their possible passage in March cannot reduce our operating budget to zero. If this action is not taken and these articles pass, we could not open Alton Central School's doors next year. I cannot apologize enough to the members of the Buildings and Grounds Committee for my misunderstanding. They have spent several years counting on the bond moving forward to a ballot vote in March 2012. So what is this all about? The Municipal Finance Law, RSA 3218, limits the amount of money that voters can approve in excess of what a budget committee has voted as their total budget. Excuse me. For those who really need it, I do have copies of this RSA for those who like, might like to see it, and I will make that available afterwards. That limit is referred to as the 10% rule. Whatever amount the budget committee voted to approve, you see that as a tally vote, um, voters cannot approve more than 10% higher. I knew all about the 10% rule, and in fact, my assistant at the SAU office and I had discussed what would be 10% of the articles that would apply, and were confident that voters would not be able to vote an amount higher than 10% of what the budget committee might fail to approve. Unfortunately, all of this hinged on this simple understanding of the fact that the bond articles are, include, are included in this 10% cap. Had I known this, I could have recommended to the Alton School Board to add language to the warrant articles 
recommended, um, indicated in the passage of this article, shall override the 10% limitation imposed on the appropriation due to the non-recommendation of the Budget Committee. Well, there were several simple, ordinary events that normally take place that could have kept the district from being in this place at this time. They did not happen. Trying to blame anybody or anything now will not fix this problem. Please be very clear about two things. The Alton School Board properly expects me, as their superintendent, to know these laws. They are not in any way at fault for the failure of these three articles to have been appropriately addressed. Secondly, the Alton Budget Committee is expected to vote on each article based on what members believe is in the best interest of the community, and that is how they voted. Neither elected body has any culpability in this error. Please do not start pointing fingers. Blaming either the board or the budget committee will not help this community, nor will you be pointing fingers in the right direction. This is a simple error based on my misconception of a law, and the error is mine. So what is the remedy? Unfortunately, at this point, it is limited. If you did nothing here today, and the three bond articles were passed by the voters in March, well, they are physically placed at the beginning of the warrant and then were placed at the beginning of the ballot, the Department of Revenue Administration, known as the DRA, which sets the amount of money on which your taxes are based, will have no option but to fund the bonds. But once we hit the maximum amount of money that has been duly and legally voted as the Alton Budget Committee's recommended budget, that 10% cap, which is $16 million, $743,568, but $2 million less than the bond, the DRA will be forced to deny funding for any other articles on the warrant below what that bond number is, and the ballot, whether it's approved by the voters or not, will not allow those, ballots to be, those articles to be funded. You will know that the operating budget comes after the bond articles. We could end up with no money to run the schools. This cannot happen. Two members of the Alton School Board and two members of the Alton Budget Committee met yesterday to discuss alternatives to this problem. I assure you, I know at least four different attorneys in the Department of the Revenue Administration spent time Thursday afternoon and much of Friday looking for alternatives. We are presenting the only option each of these individuals has suggested. At this point, you as voters hold the remedy in your hands. This is a motion to move all three bond articles to the end of the warrant and to the end of the ballot. Please vote yes. In this way, these articles can go on the ballot, but will not affect the operating budget under the 10% rule. Voters still have a chance to vote on these articles in March. Those who wish to support the bonds may do so. Those who do not wish to support the bonds can vote no. At least the option will be on the ballot, which is what both the board and the budget committee are trying to preserve. I am also asking that you please stay to the end of this meeting to keep these articles alive. I am so sorry for my lack of understanding of this rule. It is my job to know these things. I have wasted so much time of the work of so many people, and I especially apologize to the Buildings and Grounds Committee. This is certainly not how I wish to leave this district. You're a wonderful community with a great school full of the nicest, eager students. They are willing to work so hard a professional and support staff devoted to improving educational opportunities for students and parents who give the best they can to children. You will see how well this collaboration has worked when you see the kneecap scores. I wish I knew how to fix this. I don't. I can only do my best for the remaining time that I am here, and again, I am sorry. I do encourage you to amend Articles 3, 4, and 5, to change the language and to move them to the warrant, to the end of the warrant and to the end of the ballot. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Is there any discussion about this amendment, just the amendment to move them to the end? 
Please start by stating your names. Yes, Dave St. Cyr. The question I have with regards to this particular, in this case, RSA 3218A, paragraph 2A, why can we not take and add that to the warrant above the article as it specifies it can be done? In this case, it provides for the following wording. Passage of this article shall override the 10% limitation imposed on this appropriation due to the non-recommendation of the Budget Committee. This is to be located basically immediately before the article. If that's the case, why can we not do that and be, have this considered? Granted, I understand that the way things are, they really, it potentially could be at the end. But why can't the 10% limitation be annotated on the warrant as specified by RSA? That's a good question. Who'd care to address that? The school attorney. With your permission, Mr. Moderator. Unfortunately, the can way everyone this hear her? No. no. Sure not. Oops. It's been one of those days. I don't know if you, have, you do have a copy oh, of yeah, it with you. If you look at paragraph 2A, it says the governing body, that means the school board, yes. shall place the following statement at the beginning of the warrant article. That means that statement has to go on the warrant article before the warrant is posted. The warrant was posted on Monday but because that's the deadline by which it had to be posted. Um, there's no way to fix this, trust me. We have tried. We have contacted the Department of Revenue Administration. We have done everything. Uh, it can't be fixed. I, I don't know. I just I find that hard to believe for what it's worth that, and again, the governing body is in session right now. The their session, vote, their vote on this particular addition could, in effect, solve the problem. I, I grant it. I understand that the warrant has been posted, but this is technically, it doesn't adjust any of the language as far as the articles are concerned. It clarifies the 10% limit that evidently uh, a lot of people, and not just Mrs. Holt, I mean, I, I, you know, a lot of people fail to realize that this was the case. No, and I, I can appreciate that, and what you say makes good sense. Unfortunately, the law is the law, and it requires that language on the warrant before the warrant is posted. It requires the board to vote before the warrant is posted, and it requires the language to be on the warrant. Uh, so there, there's nothing that can be done about it at this point, at this meeting, okay. other than move those articles to the end of the warrant, as uh, the superintendent has indicated, so that you don't end up without a budget. Well, and I understand the consequences of that. Totally. I just wish that it could be settled in a much easier manner than what we're happy to do now. Thank you. Any other discussion on the amendment? State your name, Mr. Hussey. <laughs> yes, my name is Dave Hussey. Uh, I live on 141. Get a little closer to Mike. <clears throat> my name is Dave Hussey. I live on 141 Lakewood here in Oakland. Uh, first of all, I want to commend the teachers. I think they do a great job going forward and everything like that. I'm very happy with that. But what I'm here right now for, I have a concern. My concern is I've seen the school board come in front of CIP not prepared. I've seen them come in front of the budget committee, not prepared. And now we're saying that this is... I'm, I'm going to cut you off on that because uh, uh, it really has nothing to do with the amendment. And I don't want to go down the road that well, we were it, talking about a little It really early. does have something to do with the amendment, with, with our, what I'm going to say next. Uh, we don't want to point fingers here. I'm That's, not pointing yeah. fingers. Well, I, am ju I am just saying that by what I've seen, this is not a simple problem. It's a compounded problem. And I feel that we are not ready to approach a project of this size. I'm, go I'm going to cut you off because it has nothing to do with the amendment. The it amendment doesn't. is to move 
the articles. Well, and that's what I was going to say. I'm not in favor of moving the article forward because I don't think they're ready for it. Okay, that's fine. Any other discussion regarding the, the amendment? Hearing none, they'll uh, be moved to the end of the ballot and we'll discuss them at a later time. Um, oh yeah, we need, this is an amendment, so we do need a vote. All in favor of the amendment, raise your cards, please. All opposed? It's a positive vote. Uh, I don't think we have to restrict reconsideration on it. Uh, now let's get to the work of the day and turn to Article 2, please. Article 2, to determine and fix the salaries of the school board and the compensation of any other officer or agents of the district as follows. Moderator, $200 per meeting. Clerk, $200 per meeting. Treasurer, $2,000. Chairman of the school board, $2,100. School board members, $2,000. Uh, these cost items are included in the operating budget. The Alton School Board recommends by a vote of five to zero. The Alton Budget Committee does not recommend by a vote of one to six. Who moves the article? I do. Sandy Wyatt. Second, Second. Terry Norris. Uh, who would care to speak in favor of the article? Ms. Moderator, I'd like to amend that article. Okay, I'll accept that at this point. Yeah, read it please. I move to amend the article to read, to determine and fix the salaries of the school board and the compensation of the other officers and agents of the district as follows. Moderator, $200 per meeting. Clerk, $200 per meeting. Treasurer, $2,000. Chairman of the school board, $2,000. School board members, $1,900. These cost items are included in the operating budget. And, and to pay the school business manager, Kathy Oblinas, a one-time stipend of $500. Second. We have a second. Uh, Mr. Miller. Second. Um, who would care to speak in favor of the article? Mr. Moderator, um, this year the Budget Committee had no representative to the Budget Committee, no school board representative all year long. The, uh, the business manager Kathy Oblinas probably answered over 300 questions. The school board, which did show up once in a great while, probably answered three. I believe that she is doing an outstanding job. I think that the, the school board is not, and they, their pay should go toward a one-time stipend for, for uh, Kathy Oblinas. And I think the other school board, uh, the other budget committee members would agree with me. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone uh, care to discuss the article? Krista Hadjaropoulos. Let's see, how many, I guess the question here is how many meetings did the Open School Board really attend? Can you all hear her? No. Between January 1st, 2011 and December 31st, 2011, the Alton School Board did miss eight budget committee meetings out of 23 meetings that the budget committee held. Out of those eight meetings, there were three conflicts with Prospect Mountain board meetings, which occur on Tuesday nights. The budget committee kept a Tuesday, Thursday night schedule. Uh, there was one meeting in January of 2011 with a, uh, that was a conflict with a buildings and grounds meeting. There were only two meetings that did not have a rep, and it was because we didn't have one assigned yet. It was shortly after voting. The other one was in October, and it was a budget committee workshop. Um, for the other three meetings that are left in question, the Alton School Board was in negotiations for teachers' contracts on Thursday nights. Um, let's see. The Alton Budget Committee was made aware of the Alton School Board's uh, obligation to attend JMA meetings. Additionally, there was a JMA meeting that was actually canceled on the 15th of November, just so that an Alton School Board rep could make it to a Budget Committee meeting that night. We are school board members first. The Alton Budget Committee insisted on their Tuesday-Thursday schedule. The Alton School Board members last year attended 136 meetings in 2011, and that doesn't include meetings with legal counsel, administration, or other board-related time. 
Data, it, this data is gathered from meeting minutes from 2011 and indicate board members spent over 265 hours in meetings last year. The Alton Budget Committee has an excessive schedule when compared to other budget committees in the Lakes region. 16 towns budget committee schedules were reviewed and it was found that those committees meet an average of 10 to 12 times a year, or 10 times in 12 months average. The Alton Budget Committee met 23 times in 12 months. The question is, the Alton Budget Committee also, ha or the Alton Board of Selectmen also has a representative to the Alton Buildings and Grounds Committee, as we've had a lot of discussion this year about our, our, uh, um, our building project. There has been no representative to the Alton, from the Alton Board of Selectmen to the Buildings and Grounds Committee member, and I'm curious, um, Board of Selectmen member, who's the uh, representative to Buildings and Grounds? Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I am Bob Long of Law, and I rise to speak against this amendment. Uh, whenever I tuned in Channel 26 uh, Budget Committee meeting, admittedly I didn't watch every single one, but uh, all but one time there was a, a, a school board member present. Uh, so I think there being, a, additionally, I am sometimes in conversation with the school board members because I have some interaction video-wise and stuff, and one of them has, uh, commented to me, by golly, she'd been to eight meetings that week uh, dealing with the school board business. Uh, so I don't think that these people are being, uh, uh, they're being overworked, if, if anything. So if this amendment should pass, I'll rise to amend it again to raise the school board uh, salaries. Thank you. Yes. My name is Shirley Lane and I would like to speak against this amendment. I think the school board does an outstanding job, and I think their first and primary um, duty is to attend school board meetings, not budget committee meetings. And as long as they've sent a representative over to the budget committee, which was the finance officer, I think they've done their commitment and have done their job. I think the selectmen ought to look to their meetings. They have members who are not showing up for the selectmen's meetings, and they are not, they are not uh, doing anything about that. I think they ought to look to their own meetings, and I think the school board ought to be commended for their job. Thank you. Yes. One more thing I'd like to add to that, to the statistics that I, I presented earlier. Never did an Alton uh, school board member miss an Alton budget committee meeting where the school boards or the school district budget was up for discussion that, at that meeting. So any of the meetings that were any of the meetings that were missed were ones where it was town budget that was being reviewed. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes. yes. What he's doing here is going down on the floor because he's not speaking for the budget committee, he's speaking for himself. That's the way I ask it to be done. Pardon me? Okay. It's fine. I, I could have waited, but this is Carol Locke. Yeah. And I just want to say that I do appreciate every hour spent by school board members. I don't personally have the time to do their job, and I do appreciate all those hours. And so I really consider this amendment a very negative move on a person's part that should be voted down. I'm Thank sorry, you. I don't support it. Thank you. Mr. Miller? Uh, Steve Miller. Uh, my name is Steve Miller. Uh, just to make close to the mic, Steve. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, just a correction. The day that uh, we had a budget meeting, uh, that the building, that the um, Warren article was being presented for the $18 million and change for the um, renovation of the new school, uh, there was uh, no but there was no school board member there to make the presentation. It was made by the superintendent, and that's probably the most one of the most important meetings. Uh, uh, presentations that should have uh, been attended to probably in the last five years since the uh, JMA brought up the new high school. And um, my position also is that um, 
If I were a member of the school board, I would certainly give up a portion of my pay to Kathy O'Blanus for all the outstanding work and extra effort that she did for, uh, for, she did for the town of Alton and for the school board over the last year. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes. Chris Argeropoulos. Um, nobody is denying for a fact that Kathy Oblinas did not go above and beyond the call of duty this year. I want to thank her and the rest of our administrative staff for their service this year. They absolutely um, answered the call of duty. However, the um, article that Mr. Miller just referenced to from uh, the 15th of December that was discussed, there was a school board representative who did make, make it to that meeting that night, and that was Linda Goosens. I personally thank her for going to that. That article was also discussed and presented to the Budget Committee, and it's in their meeting minutes from uh, December 1st. So it was not the Budget Committee's first time hearing it. It was their first time hearing it with that number in it of 18 million. Prior to that, we had a much higher number. At that night, we had unfortunate circumstances within our own board. We had trouble with coverage to that meeting. It was also a meeting that was added to the schedule. The schedule was amended that was originally given to us. Things happen. Life goes on. You know, the, the school board did the best they could for coverage that night, and we do thank Linda for being there on the 15th. Thank you. Any further discussion? school board hasn't even, doesn't even have an elected representative of the budget committee. They've been fighting among themselves and it's been a catch, catch can. Uh, and we were not presented anything but from the superintendent about that, all of that warrant article about the $21 million school. There was nobody in attendance from the school board. There was, there was nights when the, when the supposed representative came in, they didn't even have a budget book in front of them. They sat there with no budget book in front of them while we're going over the budget. Which, which time? This is a legal obligation. The buildings and grounds that you wanted to, a, 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 I'm the person on the buildings and grounds. That's an obligation. It's a legal obligation to have a school board member have a member on the budget committee. They're not fulfilling their legal obligation. Whoever ha happens to show up at the night happens to come in without a budget book and, and wants to talk, sit there and listen while we go through the budget with Kathy O'Bleedis or the superintendent. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your name? Hello, my name is John Archeropoulos and I'd like to speak against this motion. My wife, of course, is on the school board. The prior year she was the representative to the school board and while she was in that position she was subjected to a barrage of negative emails and telephone calls and just assaults on her character and untenable working conditions to be a rep to the budget committee. I, I think it's an insult to say we're going to cut the pay of a school board that works twice as much as any school board in the state. And I'm personally offended by this motion because I've seen how hard my wife worked when she was the rep to the school board and the negative emails that she got from a, a member of the budget committee and the phone calls bordering on harassment. So if there wasn't a rep to the school board, maybe it's the working conditions. Thank you. <laughs> Any other discussion? Yes. Thank you. I just want to say, my name is Christine Tilly, um, that the school board... Move closer to the mic, they can't hear you. Closer? Okay, I thought it was loud. Christine Tilly here. Um, I just want to say that I actually think that a school board position is nearly a part-time job. That salary is so low. So if there is, um, if on the floor today that they do pass this, I am going to object it and I'm going to see potentially about raising that salary. 144 meetings is unbelievable. And um, people here on the school board, our parents have other jobs. It's an unbelievable time commitment. I think that they've done a fantastic job, and I think they've given you all a valid reason why they were not there or absent on a few of those budget committee meetings. 
Um, in the past, they have been present at budget committee meetings. But to penalize them this year is inappropriate. I think if you are concerned about your elected officials, you should go ahead and try consider about running yourself or vote this election for a person that you want in that position. But don't penalize the board now that we elected a couple years ago or three years ago. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, Dave St. Cyr. Just a little history on this, because I was at the meeting where this particular amendment was proposed during the budget discussion. It was brought forth by the Board of Selectmen. In this case, I consider that to be micromanaging the school district and their salaries. They have no right whatsoever to even talk about the salaries of the school board. And much less to control or add to the salary of an individual who is under contract with the district. It is the point superintendent. Of point of order. When I did that as a member, it had nothing to do with the selectmen. You were a member. You were the selectmen's representative to the, to the budget know. committee meeting no, that no, night, that and that's how it came across. Sorry. Attack, that's, that's no, it's not a matter. personal attack. It's a matter of yes, record. It is. It's a it matter of record. To do with the he proposed that amendment to this warrant article at that budget hearing. Okay. So this is just an extension of the Board of Selectmen's effort to undermine the school board. Point of order. That is Thank not, you. I am not representing the I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you address that when you're done. Thank you. Go ahead, address I am a member of the Budget Committee by, appointed by the Selectmen. It had nothing to do with the Selectmen. My position as a Selectman. Why are you smiling and grinning about this? That is not funny what you're accusing me of. Or the Selectmen. Tone it down a little. Well, I'm, this is that is that is out of order, Mr. Chairman. That has nothing to do with the selectmen. I am a member of this budget committee appointed by them. That's the whole issue here. And to have somebody come up and, and then say that this is something to do with the selectmen in my position is is it's disgraceful. Thank you. Thank you. Ruth. They're not a member at large. Ruth Massier. It's not the same. I'm sick of listening to it. I moved the question. I think we're getting way out of order. Do we have a second? second? We have a second. It requires a two-third vote of these present to move the question. All in favor, raise your cards. All in favor of what? Oh yes, you're correct. Well, move the question. We're, we're moving the question, then we'll vote on it. That's what she's asking. So we're we'll in on discussion. It. Yeah, yeah. All in favor of moving the question, raise your cards. All opposed? The question has been moved. All in favor of the motion, raise your cards. All opposed? This is the amendment, correct? The amendment, this is the amendment. The amendment fails. <laughs> Any other discussion on Article 2? Hearing none, we'll move to Article I believe we're going to six oh, now. Yeah. Motion to restrict. We have a motion to restrict reconsideration. Wait a minute. Yes. Just did. We just did. No. no, we voted on the amendment. No, we don't vote the article. The article goes to the uh, the polls. All we did, all we vote today are amendments. Okay. Motion to restrict. We have a motion to restrict reconsideration. A second. Yes. Second. We have a second. All in favor of restricting reconsideration of uh, Article 2, raise your cards. All opposed? Article 2 is restricted. Article 6, in the event that Article 4 is defeated, to see if the school district will vote to create an expendable trust fund under provisions of RSA 198-20-C to be known as the Geothermal Energy Expendable Trust for the purpose of contracting and installing geothermal heating system for the Alton Central School facility. Furthermore, to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 toward this purpose, and to name the school board as agents to expend from this fund. 
this warrant article to be void and have no effect if Article 4 is approved by the voters. The Alton School Board recommends $50,000 by a vote of 5 to 0. The Alton Budget Committee does not recommend $50,000 by a vote of 1 to 6. Who moves the motion? I do. Christopher Adropoulos. Second. Second. Jeff St. Cyr. Uh, I believe I have an amendment on, uh, suggested on this article. No, this is not the one. Yeah. This is one. Uh, who cares to speak in, in favor of the motion? I do. One, one second. Chris, did you have the amendments? Yes, you do. Yes. Yes. Take out this part and the last part. Mr. Moderator, I have an amendment to this article, and it's a language amendment, and it's to remove the, the words, in the event that Article 4 is defeated, and also the words, this warrant article is to be void and to have no effect if Article 4 is approved by the voters. That's okay, do we have a second? Second. We have a second over here. Uh, could I have a uh, copy of that or something? She's got it. She's just got to highlight it. Does everyone understand the amendment? The amendment. Uh, takes the first uh, six, uh, seven le uh, words out of the uh, beginning of Article 6, and that is in the event that Article 4 is defeated, and Article 4, of course, has been moved to the end of the ballot now. Uh, and then down below where it says this warrant article to be void and have no effect if Article 4 is approved by the voters, that's to be deleted also. So basically, this does not tie into Article 4 any longer. Uh, Who would care to speak in favor of the amendment? The amendment to Article 4, uh, Article 6, sorry, my apologies. The amendment to Article 6 that's before you today is being presented simply as a technicality because of the reference in it to Article 4. Uh, it needs to be amended. Uh, and it, it's in light also of what was explained to you by Superintendent Holt at the beginning of our meeting. Any discussion on the uh, amendment? Yes. Hi, Jana Mellon. Um, I just wanted to know if you remove those words from the article, is there a potential that this could pass and all of the other things regarding the school don't, don't pass, so we wind up with a expendable trust for geothermal, but all the other things at the end don't pass? Go ahead. It doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if the bond articles are approved because they will not be funded. The appropriations will not be valid because of the 10% rule. So all these articles that were contingent upon the bond articles being defeated, we're taking out that contingent language so that these articles will stand on their own. Basically, the vote on the bond articles uh, when you go to the official balloting in March is simply going to be the effect of a straw poll. They will well, have no legal effect. Okay, do you understand? What did Ms. Holt just say? Except for a special meeting. Yes, but the vote, the vote when you vote in March on those bond articles will have no legal effect. In other words, to get the bond issues approved, we're probably going to have to request a special meeting or wait until next year. So the votes on the bond articles, um, we, you know, the school board wants to have the people vote on them to see 
how they feel about the project, but because of the budget law problem, uh, they can't be funded, they can't be uh, adopted. It, they won't have any legal effect. Okay. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Miller. The Budget Committee uh, voted to not recommend this article. Uh, Okay. We'll give you a shot in a second, Steve. No Just on the amendment, folks. He hearing or seeing none, all in favor of the amendment, please raise your cards. All opposed. The amendment passes. We have a motion to restrict reconsideration of the amendment. So second. move Terry Noyes, second Chris Rogeropoulos. All in favor of restricting reconsideration of the amendment to Article 6, raise your cards. All opposed? The amendment is restricted to further reconsideration. Uh, anyone care to speak to the article? Steve, at this point. Committee uh, did not recommend this article for the following reasons. Number one is we do not question the science and we do not question the validity uh, and um, uh, th and the reasoning for a geo geothermal unit. A geothermal unit will cost somewhere in the neighborhood of a million to three quarters, one million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. If you put fifty thousand dollars a year into this fund. If you put $50,000 a year into this fund, you won't have enough money for, fit for about 35 years before there's enough money to effectively put in a geothermal unit. Uh, it, was, it's, it was our um, consideration that if this makes sense for the current school, and this is what the town wants, then it should be bonded out and, and put the geothermal unit in. And also, there should be a target year when the geothermal unit goes in. For example, if you're looking 10 or 15 years down the road to have money for a geothermal unit, the science may change, and all of a sudden it may be solar, it may be canola oil, it could be something else in 10 or 15 years from now. So uh, that's why uh, we decided to not recommend it. Any further discussion? Yes. Yes. This expendable trust fund is being set up to offset the cost of geothermal. Uh, as you know, the objective of the Alton Central School Buildings and Grounds Committee and the Alton School Board is to have a renovation. This is to set money aside that would go into a bond to off or and offset the cost of the bond. When we have a warrant article passed for a bond to renovate the school, that's when this would be, this money would be put to use. So this would go to the offset of a bond. It's not something that we intend to collect for 30 years or have for warrant articles of 30 years or what have you, but it is something that we intend to put forward into a bond for the renovation of our Alton Central School when we get to that point. Thank you. Thank you. Over here. Hello, my name is Lawrence Tilley. I'm speaking as a resident of Alton. I live on Stockbridge Corner Road. I'm all in favor of the geothermal system for the renovated school. The uh, truth is that the current school cannot be renovated with um, geothermal system as is. It needs the actual full renovation done to be able to take advantage of geothermal. And I understand setting aside money, you know, for um, offsetting larger costs, you know, that's very, you know, very wise to save, but $50,000 is a very large amount of money to be setting aside for an undetermined amount of time. Um, I personally would vote immediately for the full funding of a geothermal part of a renovation, but I'm not comfortable setting aside that much money, you know, in a storage of funds that we do not know when it could take place. Thank you. For the discussion, yes, sir. Yes, Dave St. Cyr. The question I would have in this case, let's say we, we approve this warrant article to set aside $50,000.
and let's say three, four years down the road, we decide against geothermal. Does that money that may be set aside in that account go back to the town as a basically a refund? Or is yeah. the is the setup of this particular trust fund restrictive enough so that it cannot be spent on anything else? No. Yes. There are two things uh, you can do uh, when you no longer need a capital reserve or a trust fund. You can vote to discontinue the fund at the annual meeting. All that takes is a simple majority. When you do that, the money is returned as a general revenue, and it will offset your appropriations. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can vote to change the purpose of the fund uh, to something else. Uh, changing the purpose requires a two-thirds vote, which is why we usually discontinue the funds instead. So the, the potentially what it could do is basically be used in a year to offset any tax increase, if you would, uh, because if the, if the fund were decided to be discontinued, as you said, it goes back into the general revenue. Is that the general revenue of the school district or the general revenue of the town? No, it's the school district revenue. Okay, so it could be used to offset a budget. So it's basically putting money in a savings account that could be used to benefit the school. And I would make the comment that while I was on the Buildings and Grounds Committee a number of years ago, Geothermal was one of those things we looked at, and we were impressed with the, the operation of geothermal. I see no problem with putting, setting money aside 